The most important aspect of executing research project is the research methodology that you have chosen. Now, one important aspect that you must remember is that all the methodology that you are using in your research should be validated methodology. Validated means it is proven to be working. It is proven to give the expected results. And all the equipment that you are using in your methods must have been calibrated. And that calibration is that is expected you know it is performing what is expected to do if a balance is calibrated you know 100 milligrams is accurately weighed that means whatever the reading that shows after 100 milligrams exact weight should be 100 a ph meter value um, calibrated ph meter means when a ph 7 standard buffer is put it should demonstrate that the ph meter is showing a reading of 7. When you say a standard pH 7.0 uh, know, buffer, the buffer should be really pH 7.0. You cannot just put a pH 6 buffer but labeled as standard pH 7 buffer. Then many a times you people would simply say that, oh sir, oh, that, that kind of mistake would not occur from the bottle we picked up pH 7 buffer. If the bottle was contaminated, if somebody has by mistake added some other thing, into it, then the student would laugh and say that why would anybody do that sir, you know. But the question is, do you know whether anybody has done it, that nobody has done it, you know that. In other words, everything has to have a, a track, a, a record that nothing unusual has been done and everything as expected has been performed in the laboratory. Now, if you have a track of all those things, then automatically you fall under GLP, you know. So therefore, the, the research methodology must be executed under good laboratory practices. You may not be really built a system of good laboratory practices that is acceptable to regulatory authorities. That's different. But a good laboratory practice set to meet the purpose of research, you know, experimental research must be maintained. Uh, if, if your research employs um, pH meters or, you know, liquid measuring devices or, or balances or thermometers which have never been calibrated, they are, they are in really bad shape, there, there are, you know, balances are rusted and there is so much of spillage and the, the pan has spots and all those things, then please assume that the results that you are obtaining and, and using those equipment are assumed to be correct. That need not be correct. So, a research, good methodology and good validated methodology and calibrated equipment are a necessity to perform good results, I mean good research. Now, projects must be executed to a very well-defined plan with sequence of steps and project execution must be, you must be able to track it on the time plan you have provided, you know. You know, if, if there is a three-month toxicity study is there, the three-month toxicity study would take three months, you know, more than three months because there's a preparation phase, then the execution phase, and then analysis phase. So it is going to take four months. So you really have to plan in such a way that if a three-month toxicity study is a part of your research, then you have to, um, on the time scale, you have to set it up in, in, a, in such a way that it is started at a particular point well within the middle of the research and then completed just, uh, you know, uh, just before the research is concluded that the data from the three-month toxicity plan, uh, I mean, project is incorporated in your research conclusions because sometimes the results from a toxicity experiment can prove, I mean, can be very, very detrimental for your research. That means everything is good, but it's also toxic. So everything is bad, you know. So the type of execution is essential for a good research. Here you have to also understand a set of internal and external factors that could, that could impact your execution research. Internal factors are the factors that are under your control. External factors are the factors that are beyond your control. I'll give you a simple example. 
Suppose you are planning to go abroad to perform, I mean to, to study abroad. What are the internal factors and what are the external factors responsible for that? You know, I can simply tell you. You have to get good marks, you have to get good GRE and then you have to apply in time to secure admission. All are based on good marks, good GRE, apply on time. These are all internal factors that are dependent on you. You apply and then if you get admission, if you get a, um, you know, the admission I-20, whatever form that, that American universities send and then based on that you apply for a visa, F1 visa and then if the visa is obtained then you go abroad. The external factors are the university and the visa office, American, American consulate. Those are the two that you cannot control. But the, if you can control your internal factors properly to get good result, then the external factors can be influenced okay, because of these results. Then you can, I got such a GRE score, I got such a great point average, I got such a uh, very good references, I, I wrote a good um, statement of purpose. So therefore, I get my admission. You know? So you are influencing by, by controlling your internal factors very well you influence the external factor. So these are the things that are very much applicable within your research also. These are called internal factors and external factors and you must ensure that you identify them and see how they can be controlled. Okay, so uh, that's execution.